Hello. 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 Good morning. Good oh man, we morning. are both wearing underground. I know I was thinking merch, about nothing have... like an underground uh organization having merch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not affiliated with the unforgivable. Not it's not different. the dark cabal of witches and wizards yeah. and wizards unite. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good. We just had a good breakfast. Mm-hmm. It was bordering on parts of an English breakfast, which was fitting. We just <laughs> needed some beans and a piece of toast, mm. but it was quite delicious. Yes. Fried an egg for the first time in a long time. Yeah. Hadn't done a fried egg nice. in a while. Turned out pretty good. Yep. Uh, had a good Saturday. Yesterday was a lot of fun. Yeah. We were just, we, we, we did a lot of stuff during the day, and then we had a very relaxing evening. Mm-hmm. We have watched the same documentary about Foo Fighters twice now and uh, forgot that we had already seen With it. Some but it was, years in between. Yes. It was too late. We were like, oh, it's fine. It's enjoyable. It was still enjoyable. It was we still watched enjoyable. a lot of Foo Fighters videos. Well, how did we you even did get on you to that? You did it. You were like, I want to watch Foo Fighters. No, stuff. it was because we were watching. We watched Squid Game. Squid Game. The first Game. episode. And then we were like, Wait, that why? was violent. I don't What's even different? remember. No, you said to me, I was, I was walking to the kitchen and you're uh -huh. like, I think I'm going to watch uh, Foo Fighters stuff. Yeah, but there was a reason that I started thinking about mm. that. And I was like, I want to listen to Foo Fighters. <laughs> and Well, part of it is that they had recently uh, Foo done. Foo Fighters. They're on a tour. And so they had ah. performed. And then I went to their YouTube page and found a bunch of stuff. I found some SNL. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, we didn't get to watch SNL. We got to watch SNL today. SNL mm -hmm. is back. Saturday Night Live. It's usually what we do on Sunday mornings. But now... We read Harry Potter and talk about Both it on good. Sunday morning. Equally good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I was excited to um to watch some Foo Fighters for some reason. I think in part we were like <laughs> we were we were kind of in the mood for documentaries. So we had been looking through like a couple different of the services to see if yeah. there was a documentary for us to watch. Well, because we usually then... watch game documentaries or documentaries about gaming. Or music. Or music. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, we watched the drum one. Did we do that first? We did watch the drum documentary. So we documentary. watched a documentary on... It was on... a good Saturday. <laughs> we were just chilling out. Oh, gosh. I don't know if it was Hulu or Netflix. or It's on one of the streaming services, and I don't even remember what it was called, but it was basically about... It was like a bunch Count of drummers. Me in. Count Me In is what it's called. Yeah. And I saw from... It must have been Netflix, because I think I saw the little preview, and it was Taylor Hawkins, who is the drummer for Foo Fighters. So this, right. is, this, is, this is all connected, I promise. Uh, that's what happened. We ended up watching a bunch of Foo Fighters, yeah. found out Dave Grohl has a memoir coming out, and so yeah. it's, it's just a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, Chad Smith still looks like Chad Will Ferrell and Smith. vice versa. That whole, they could have remade that documentary with a bunch of people because I think that yes, the, there was the, a person who looked like Chris Martin. Well, there was the girl looked like um, the person who's in Brooklyn Nine Nine that Pink. also played oh, no no Rosa. Uh, that also played uh, yeah Rosa uh, Diaz Sofia Ver Vergara's yes. sister in yes. Modern Family. I forget. Oh the man, I can't remember name, her name, yes. but yes, she looked like her too. Anyway, um, that was what we did yeah. yesterday. We watched a bunch of TV <laughs> just that night. Just at night, yeah. Uh, oh man, I streamed twice yesterday. There yeah, was you uh, did. first Five time hours of streaming. <laughs> Jackbox party time on YouTube, and then uh, we Jackbox did our demoed with a bunch of a literal demos, a bunch of demos. It was a lot yesterday. of fun. There were some great games. Yep, lots of great games. But that's not why we're here. That's Lynette. not why, why we're we here. here I know. I'm always like, hey, check out we demoed. And we also have another podcast. No, no, no. But. <laughs> it's part of the We're intro, for... but we are here for an excellent chapter. <laughs> for Haroldini Potter. <laughs> Haroldini. Wanzerty. Turn to page 75, Bagman and Crouch. Today's lesson is called Wide, Wide World. The chapter begins with Harry, Hermione, the Weasleys, and the Diggories arriving at the Quidditch World Cup. They check in at their campsites, arrive at their tents, and Mr. Weasley insists on going it the muggle way. Mm. Harry and Hermione help him assemble the tent and start the fire. At some point, our trio gather water from a tap and on the walk there and back, see all sorts of witches and wizards and even some that they know. Mm. At the campsite, Ludo Bagman arrives boisterously and has a chat from his spot on the grass. He is enjoying himself to no end and has even begun taking bets on the game, a proposition <laughs> that the twins take him up on. Party 
Barty Crouch comes by. Party Crouch. Party. Barty Crouch comes by the opposite of Bagman and insists that Bagman not share the other secret before it's time. Well, okay, now I can't think about gambling without, I'm sorry to go back, Squid Game. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, uh, that that show, we only watched the first episode. It stressed me out. But um, <laughs> I saw a meme about it this morning. Yeah. Yeah, from a later episode. And I was like, mm, oh, boy. So oh, dear. Still some risk Oh, there. gosh. The I first... didn't think they'd slow down on killing people no, after the first no. episode. It, Spoilers it just... ahead. Oh, gosh, yes. If, yeah. you, if you like weird dystopian murder, evil bad guy type things, check it out. Yeah. Uh, the first thing I wrote is that Ludo Bagman should get a fine or something for not being subtle with the statute of secrecy. Or I, at the very least, be removed from leadership. Like, can you not? Yeah. I don't know. So. If you're likable. I know. Get away with a lot of stuff. Okay, so actually, there is some sort of parallel with like you know. <laughs> now I don't know if we've talked about the pandemic, uh, like in connection. I guess uh, I don't know. I guess we have like in the context of like school and education, but like thinking about uh, just like people's reactions and like uh, so. I'll just say specifically in the state of California, Gavin Newsom getting some flack for for like uh, mask mandates and then. You know, people being like, oh, you weren't wearing a mask here or whatever. So, you know, the sort of like what leadership looks double like. Standards. in And yeah. And because. But it's not even a double standard. I feel like he just doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing is that like all of these other people are basically cleaning up his mess right. or like just trying to. like. Because he, he even says like, yeah, it's been pretty quiet. They haven't had much to do. And then there's like all these other. They're workers. all just like, yeah, they're they're running around yeah. and trying to like not draw suspicion. And so you all of that effort. When Totes. it could be avoidable, all you need just to do be a bit more organized. is just like not be flashing around and being yeah. like, oh, those muggles. That, I'm imagining him being like, those silly well, it's muggles. it's a classic. I think we know this type of person really well where they're like, oh, it's no big deal. But they, yeah. they don't really pay attention to what it, it takes to make it not be a big deal. Mm-hmm. The reason it's not a big deal for him to show off as a witch is, is because other people are making yeah. people forget a wizard. Yeah, I have a question. Do you yeah. think that uh, the witches and wizards ever feel bad for obliviating muggles no. constantly? Or do you think, because I was also thinking there's probably, so there's two different tones that I was thinking of, or I guess flavors, is one is that this is normal. This is just what is necessary to keep our entire society safe. Right. And then there's people that I think would um, actively want to be an obliviator. They enjoy it. Because they get glee Like the executioner. It, right? Yes. McNair. Yeah. Those are the Yeah, two- no, it's a troubling thing. It really, really is. Like this fact that the <laughs> campsite run person is... That the guy's like, oh, yeah, I've had to obliviate him like 10 times. He yeah. keeps figuring it out or whatever. And like, oh, it doesn't help that these people are being goofballs. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's a troubling set of circumstances. Well, it really made me think about like perspective taking as well, because I feel like more so than I don't know than any other time I've read the books, I've uh, I've been kind of uh to me, like I, I, my mind just gravitates to like, wait, is this good or is this bad? You know, like it, it actually trying to perspective take and be like, well, I understand like the logic and reasoning they have for doing the things that they do in the name of the statute of secrecy. And I guess this is actually not surprising because I am also the person, especially with Harry Potter Wizards Unite, being like, you know what, just get rid of the statute of secrecy. I'll Ask have, for some help. I love Constance, Constance Pickering. That's like one of the times I agreed with her. Is like, yeah, sure, get rid of it. Um, but could you imagine? Imagine <laughs> the world right now. No. <laughs> if like there were actual wizards and witches, and they're just like, oh yeah, <laughs> what up? <laughs> By the way, oh my gosh, and you would have, you would have. Okay, I can, I can tell you it's going to happen. So like, you have this reveal, and then you have the the 
domino effect of you have people who are covering it on YouTube, like entire YouTubers. You have people who are making merch out of it. You have people who are like making their own, they're like their own, not true crime podcast, but like their own investigative reports being like, this is magic. Like, oh, yeah. I said, you know, and so then it would just turn into the same boring stuff of like people just making content out of it, which I know I'm saying tongue in cheek because we make content out of everything. Made you some um, content. Exactly. Bo Burnham is right. Uh, no, but that would be chaotic. That would. Be it would be chaotic. Pure chaos. It so would be I absolute madness. I, people it, wouldn't believe it. It's very interesting, though, to think about, like, I don't think that most witches and wizards think about these things, mm -mm. but it makes me wonder um, to what extent, like, wizarding leadership, like, people who actually have authority to change the law, like, how much that comes up into conversation or if it's, like, an acceptance thing. And actually, this made me think of, uh, now that I'm talking out loud about it, about the this oh I don't think we watched it together. It was this psychological study, um, and it was about uh, it was about whether or not we were in control of our decisions. Mm. But from this interesting perspective of like uh, the default of no change, um, when con when confronted with a complex decision, the default is often no change because it's mm. hard because decisions with complexity are harder, so mm -hmm. it's easier. This this I mean. This is like a hindsight sort of like, oh, this seems very obvious, but people have actually studied this and they've studied it in the sense of like trying to collect data or for like terms of service, like the difference between opt in, opt out sort of thing. And yeah, and and, and but sometimes it's used for good. So like organ donors <laughs> was the was the was the example <laughs> of like uh, different countries who like if you had an opt in process for organ donorship that you would have a much lower percentage of the the population who would opt in but if you had the opt out then you would you know c because the default is like already set and you don't have to think or make that decision yeah so i don't know i was thinking about a lot of the sort of like politics and like you know bigger sort of like these larger questions of ethics and like uh and and not not just that but like effort is this worth the effort is the question that i keep coming back to for that's a great question wizarding world because it's such a huge commitment mm -hmm. i mean it's a massive commitment mm -hmm. to say that we're gonna erase the memories i mean think about fantastic beasts of like yeah <laughs> yeah what are they even gonna do you know all, but Oblivion seems like such a strong. So the other thing I was thinking about, yeah, it's is that strong. how do how do witches? What prevents witches and wizards from not like just obliviating each other? Is there I'm like a guard you, or no? No, they can be obliviated. That's I what know, but like Lockhart you need to did. be get caught off guard. Like you just gotta get hit by the spell. I know, but like what's to stop someone from just doing yeah, that? This is we forever. had this conversation before. Yeah, Obliviate should be an unforgivable spell. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's we a did. terrible spell. We did have this conversation because you're modifying people's spell. memories. It's a terrible spell. Yeah. <laughs> it should have been a poly. It is <laughs> a flip side of a coin from the Imperious Curse. Uh huh. Like there are two ways to control people. Yeah. You either like puppet master them or you change what they know about the world. Yeah. And so I think that this is a. This is a troubling situation. Well, I like your title, Wide Wide World, because that's what I felt in this, is that like the reason I'm posing all of these, I don't know, seemingly uh, random questions, but it's because the context is real. I mean, it keeps opening up from book to book, but really there's like a lot where it's very clear this is an entirely operating society and they have these like contingency plans and all sorts of stuff in place, employment, all, everything. You have, so there was this list of names that was like, uh, so the head of the Goblin Liaison Office, the Committee mm -hmm. on Experimental Charms, just like mm -hmm. all of these roles. And it's like, wow, they, again, to really fulfill or to uphold the statute of secrecy, you need all of these people actively working which is kind of incredible because you have you basically have a large group. Well, I don't know. I guess it's size is relative. I don't know, uh, but like a, a good enough uh, sized group of people who are deciding, yeah, we're gonna work together. Yep. <laughs> and, and sometimes that works better. This is also why I was irritated at Ludo Bagman. I'm like, dude, just pitch in. 
just do your part you know pull that, your weight just yeah it's yeah. so simple <laughs> yeah um, obliviate can be used like you know why wouldn't you i know i mean this is this is also making me wonder about like yeah because we we have had this question about if you had magic what would you do with it mm -hmm. It it's it's similar but not not really it's like a more a stronger question than what would you do with like a million dollars or whatever or whatever amount of money seems like a large amount to you um if you're Jeffrey Bezos a million dollars probably isn't yeah. that interesting to you but uh you know if you well, have that Cindy much power said something interesting about unwritten rules i actually mm. wonder if that's a great point yeah. i actually wonder if obliviate is illegal like or that need, you need it needs to be it needs to be like uh, almost like an amagus. Like it needs to be almost registered of like I'm gonna I'm gonna obliv like I'm a I'm gonna go obliviate these muggles. Yeah, it's not like you can just roll out and do it. Somehow, what mm. I guess a question well, that isn't like, necessarily an answered is would right? Lockhart go to to Azkaban? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because because he incapacitates them. Part of so actually this connects back to the earlier point of like people would they feel bad about Obliviate or this is like this is it's a it's to keep it functioning and so there there are people who are allowed to do it yeah um, yeah and I think that the idea of unwritten we do have unwritten rules of society. Do you have any so idea how difficult that, yeah. humans would have? Think about our society if we all knew uh -huh. that it was possible to have parts of our memory erased. Yeah. That like we, we knew it. Yeah, it would absolutely People would need go to be insane regulated. With conspiracies. It'd be like well, about what they've forgotten that like I must have been obliviated. Yeah. Think about what that offers you. Or you could like to give you have an obsession where you would only keep your good memories or or you would alter it. Obliviate to, yourself. Or, yeah, I don't know. Ooh, wow. God. Now you're talking. Wait, can Social you media. obliviate yourself? Oh man, now I have lots of questions. What if you obliviate the ability to no, that's not gonna work. Never mind. How so yeah, this is so interesting because it's like we have talked about access to information and like dark magic and you know, stuff that's I mean, all of this also I think well, I don't know actually. Is dark magic uh, a subjective thing? Like people have determined that it's dark, or is it that the magic itself is dark? Like in some corrupted way. Mm. I don't know if we've ever explored Unclear. that question because, yeah, the, I feel like it's imposed. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, yeah, within it. Although I say that when we do know for the creation of Horcruxes being something unnatural right, requires right. murder, so somehow those are linked. Forgive. Well, to be fair, that we think that it requires murder. Uh, oh man, no. <laughs> Oh no! Maybe it can be done in a different way. Oh I don't know. no! Like forgetting a loved one who dies. Ooh, no! Oh yeah, I could see this. No, but I could see story it being used. Story yeah. Oh, storyteller. Storyteller. Yeah, we we played this game yesterday. That was it was pretty fun. Uh, where we were making these storyboards. Um, yeah, I could see it being used in different. Con so it reminds me, actually. I don't know. I don't know if this is this is a very stretch of a parallel, but of like the internet. Hmm. Of like, the internet came and people were just like, okay. And then it took a very long time for any sort of like understanding of what it was capable of. or Meta what, understanding. Um, of uh, what does the technological tool offer to a society and right. how it could be used. And so by the time like any sort of types of regulation were attempted to be introduced, you already had like, a yeah. good amount of time where people were using it in particular ways. So, yeah, I I don't even know how you can control something like that. I don't know how did you how did I don't know. This is Pandora's box. <laughs> Gosh, I mean it, that's the parable there of like yeah, because it kind of like the statute of secrecy. It kind of feels that way of like mm. if you if you decided to get rid of it, yeah, how do you even go about such a thing? You know, you'd have to roll it out maybe with. Muggle and governments again, or something. Psychology will just keep it and just keep it's going. The way it <laughs> is, yeah. Going with it. <laughs> even though, yeah, even though there, even though there's so problems. much effort. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. It's uh, a fun chapter yeah. though, because it's like you get the spirit of like camaraderie and opposition. Mm -hmm. 
sports competition. Yeah. I what I love Mrs. Finnegan. And what I what I continue to love. Oh, I'll get to her in a second. What I continue to love are the little very just it's not major. It's super minor. Just little lines in there that remind you about Harry's positionality in this world. Mm. So now we see a flip side of like Harry as the expert who is supposed to know how to do everything where it's yep. like, Harry, uh, help me with this money. Harry, uh, what about this tent? Let me tell Harry. you something. Harry has never assembled the tent. Yeah, I know. And I felt so bad for him. Hermione might have. But then you have, okay, 180 degree turn. Ludo Bagman comes up. Arthur's like, blah, blah, blah. These are all the people and Harry Potter. And I wrote down the line. Bagman did the smallest of double takes when he heard Harry's name and his eyes performed the familiar flick upwards yes. to the scar on Harry's forehead. It's just uh, one course. line. And it's just like, just to, you know, I love these little reminders or these like uh, reinscriptions of this is who Harry Potter is. This is his position in the world and how, I mean, this is not just a one-off thing. He has experienced this countless times. And it's very familiar to him that people are, you know, have this, this, who, who is he? Who is he or who, who should he be to these people? And, and the positionality of he's still, but he's, he's an in-between. Yes. Because he was sheltered in the muggle world. He wasn't allowed to actually explore the muggle world by his aunt and uncle mm -hmm. compared to Hermione. Mm -hmm. And that, but then he also isn't just immersed in wizarding like Ron. Because yeah. I feel like it was funny. My favorite little tidbit in this chapter was about the uh, other schools. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and how he was like shocked at it. And then he was like, that was dumb. Of course, there are other schools. Yeah. And then like Hermione was just like. Well, she knew she because knew, she right? read about it. But I like that it's Harry's perspective yeah, on it. Because yeah. he's just like, Hermione was completely nonplussed. Like she was just like. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I read it in a book. Yeah, it's well, always great. She wouldn't have even needed to read it in a book. I'm sure she thought of it. Yeah, it was always it's always great when you have all three of them because yeah. it does have okay, these are the three friends and of course like it fits in line with their character of yeah, Ron knows. It also everything. makes a lot of sense about what it reinforces for me about why these three people are friends with each other. Mm. Because there is something I believe that there's something fulfilling for Ron to be the only one in the trio that was mm. raised by a wizarding family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause he like is able to, like he would have had lived his whole life with people knowing better than him. Yeah. And them just being like, oh, well it's this, well it's that, well it's this, well it's that. And that now he gets to say it to them. Yeah. Yeah. And then Harry buys them the Omnioculars. <laughs> Harry is Wizard just so Unite nice. alert. Wizard Unite Wizards alert. Wizards Unite alert. alert. I also see a theory from Jen. Maybe that's where the calamity in Wizards Unite came from. Someone tried to get rid of Obliviate and they failed. That would be, Ooh. wow. <laughs> just reverse it. Yeah, yeah. Just, oh my goodness. Uh, so speaking of wizarding families, we have the Finnegans. <laughs> Which, okay, so I think, yeah, yeah, there's like a lot of stuff. But I think his dad is a muggle. What I very very much appreciate is that is the choice of widening this world. And again, here we, we have like the different, yes, we have a statute of secrecy. Yes, we have that, you know, kind of as the law or like what all of these people are putting in effort to do. And yet not everyone agrees mm. on, you know, what, I mean, whether or not like they have power to even influence whether or not it should be a thing, but like how they should exist in this wizarding world operating under a sta the statute of secrecy. And so especially in the Quidditch World Cup, which is this is a celebratory event and people want to show off and they want to do this. And it's like, well, why can't I, you know, express myself or why can't I have all, you know, an excessive amount of shamrocks everywhere? Like, come on, <laughs> you know, freedom. it's very interesting because these little details really the fill out the world. Or the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That we always, is not a muggle tent. We all, it's a yeah. mansion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, it's great. It's great. Oh, gosh. Oh, and then we didn't talk about Ron. Ronald and Crumb. <laughs> mm. Ronald, who in present day supposedly doesn't have any memories of anything. <laughs> 
um, which I think we are increasingly suspicious about what is actually happening with Ron and how it might might or might not be connected to actually the bigger problems that they're having with the Calamity, maybe, in this cabal. But uh, he keeps saying, like, oh, whatever, I... I I don't care about Crumb. I don't know who that is. And no, you do, Ron. We have we have the evidence. The receipts are right here. You are obsessed with this person. Meanwhile, yes. Hermione is like, he looks really grumpy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is so funny. What a grump, <laughs> what a grump monster. <laughs> yeah, it cracks oh, me up. Gosh. It's such a clever way of introducing Crumb. Yeah. Because we get this instinctual reaction by Hermione. Yeah. And then later on, it just feels so fulfill. It's it just feels so good to then like have this turnaround, <laughs> where all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's he's like really likes Hermione. Yeah, and Hermione's like, yeah. oh, he's more complicated than this, you know, uh, famous Quidditch uh-huh. player persona. He's got more layers. Well, yeah, it's it actually it kind of mirrors real life. Like you know, especially you have someone who is famous, like whatever level, like a, even if it's a micro fame, and you all you know is like what is presented in right. front of you. And I don't know, it's super interesting. This is a good. Well, that's a famous yodeler. No, I'm, just, I'm completely <laughs> joking. I don't. It just made them. Yeah. But yeah. No. I, Canon. No. It's really <laughs> enjoyable. I feel like this whole chapter. There's a lot going on. I hadn't really considered your perspective on like Obliviate and the Muggles that much. I always, I'm always so amped to like I, be where they are that like well, I, yeah. I kind of ignore the. Yeah. I'm more like Bagman in that moment where I'm like, mm-hmm. ah, whatever. It'll get taken mm-hmm. care of. Like. Let's have a good time. Well, yeah, I don't know what it is, but like lately, because I'm always being the weirdo that's like, oh, hey, these muggles, I mean, these muggles, the witches and wizards aren't doing that. Like, what are you doing, people? Like, be nicer to muggles. But a lot of that also, I mean, it comes, it comes more, it's, it's interesting because these are very like normalized and like not even that controversial of things on like from especially from the wizard's perspective it's not like they're going off killing muggles like it's not something that is that extreme but it is something that well this is affects what them. I don't being know. being normal looks like right it's like all of the people here grew up under a normal condition of the statute of secrecy so you just if a muggle mm-hmm. finds out you just obliviate them and they they've probably been told whether it's true or not that it it's perfectly harmless. It doesn't hurt the muggle. Like it's for their own good. Mm-hmm. It's for the good of everyone involved, including us. Like we need the the reasoning behind like why there's a statute of secrecy, I'm sure is just collectively like accepted generally. Yeah. That it takes effort. Cause we know this about schooling in mm-hmm. our backgrounds of like it takes a lot of intellectual and emotional labor to un to to make some things that are normal not be feel normal anymore. Yes. And the reason you want to do that is because without doing that, it's really hard to imagine something different, right? So I, like thinking of all these witches and wizards, without opportunities or motivation to sort of question the statute of secrecy, they don't ever imagine what the world would be like if it was just fully integrated mm-hmm. wizards and muggles, right? They don't even, I mean, look at Mr. Weasley. Like he, he's cut, got this hobby slash obsession with muggles, but doesn't know anything. He can't even use a match. Yep. This is helplessness. Yeah. In terms of muggle technology. Yeah. So it's, it would be interesting to imagine an integrated world. Yes. Which is more mm -hmm. like Motherland. Yeah. That has an integrated world. Well, it's integrated. Is it is it fully in No, I guess it is because yeah, everyone they're the, knows. They're the army. So in Motherland there are uh, magical people as well. And there's this they there's actually so our main characters that we follow go through this academy or they try to go into it's basically an army. It's like a it's a military it's, academy. It's, yeah. So mm-hmm. they and they have a in very Salem. particular role because of their powers. But they they it's it's part of this bigger like Right. It's part of it's it's not like, oh, this is like specifically for a, a magical world that's underground. It's no, like, it's the no, whole, we because the we Salem value. Accords were basically like, we're not we're not going to pursue killing witches and wizards. Yeah. 
we're going to actually integrate completely and in you will help protect us right. and we will accept you. Yes. Yes. And I guess like there are other stories where um like supers basically are used yeah. but oh, the incredibles <laughs> oh, underground the incredibles yeah well you know this is a bit of a tangent but i was thinking about how you know how muggle technology fritzes with magic like especially yes. electronics yep an interesting proposition uh -huh. i wonder if anyone has explored the idea of it having to do with the statute of secrecy maybe it's a side effect of breaking the integration because mechanical things work, boats work. Yeah, so you're saying that the statute of secrecy might be more than just a like well, maybe verbal pack. All these obliviations <laughs> have uh, yeah affected. Well, okay, so now you're talking about like the actual like metaphysical world and like how because this is yes. this is okay. We're gonna go. No, this is we're not. So gonna there's the go tip down. of the iceberg and then the big iceberg and then this is the ocean because below it. <laughs> We're always like, wait, how does this actually work? Because so going to the very, so yeah, mechanical, magical, like, yeah. and the, so going, I guess, in a, let's try to can reel it in, like the Department of Mysteries studies. We got a reference to them these, in this chapter. Yes, we got some unspeakables identified. I didn't Bodie say their names. Bodie and Caldwell Croker? or something? Croker. Croker. But yeah, so they study these things. So it's not that it's, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they just can't figure out how to. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they fundamentally are different. I don't know. Things, phenomena, uh, power. I, I I don't know what the right word is because yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but yeah. it is interesting because, yeah, so Harry, I mean, Hermione would also serve this role. Her, Harry and Hermione would be like these cultural ambassadors or yeah. liaisons, basically, of trying to like uh, be the the translators or the mediators between two worlds. Oh, my gosh. We didn't even talk about the, the muggle outfits. Like Arthur's was somewhat normal, but you had the kilt and the, mm -hmm. and the what was it? The poncho. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the kilt and the poncho. Can you imagine? <laughs> that person People was trolling. <laughs> what, have they never seen a muggle before? Yeah. 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 Oh, my goodness. Yeah. This chapter, this chapter was good. I, I feel like, okay, I have said this before on previous episodes, like in other books, but I actually never, never finished this book. Yeah. All right. the way through. I don't remember if I ever went back and finished it. I do know what happens, yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah. know if I actually You might have done it like in different it. bits I, I think, that have eventually overlapped. Yes, I think I've read book. this book a total of one time, but like- the first half of the book I read when I was a child or right. growing up, and then the second half of the book I read in probably sometime, Michigan or Tucson. Sometime yeah, as I an adult, I can remember <laughs> it on the nightstand. This oh particular yeah, no, book I, I guess that is right. That is right. Yeah, I don't know. So I I am enjoying um I'm enjoying this experience because I also I really like the movie, and I know I yeah. I'm a visual media person as well. And so. we finally got Ludo. Yes. Yes. Now I won't forget Ludo Bagman because I'm going to be like, the look, bet, dude. The <laughs> look. That drives the whole story. Oh, my gosh. For the twins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the twins. Yeah. Oh, love them. Yeah. Love them, love them. Oh. Well, that's all that I had, I think. I'm satisfied. Okay. Until next time. One's, One's ready. ready. <laughs>